I thought I'd do a review of a, a KK Moon kit. These are available, there's lots of different kits available on Amazon. Uh, I've done a, this is my third one actually. Uh, no problems with the first one, which was a Simon toy. Uh, I can't show you that because uh, I gave it to my son and it's disappeared. Uh, but I didn't have any issues with that. They're, uh, I'm not affiliated with KK Moon, by the way. <laughs> Don't get these free. And uh, if they're rubbish, I'll, I'll tell you about it. But um, the first one was really nice, really looked great. Uh, it wasn't even 10 quid. It was something like eight pounds. Looked fantastic. Gave it to my son and uh, it's been misplaced, so I can't show you that one. Another one I did, or I'm in the process of making, is uh, this calculator. which uh, I haven't uh, got in the case yet. No issues with that. Very easy, really. I mean, it's uh, just a lot of button soldering mainly. But they, their kits look really great. Uh, and they're super good value, really. I mean, it's crazy. And this thing was uh, 11 or 12 pounds. I can't remember. <clears throat> My, yeah, 11 or 12 pounds. And I couldn't even source the components for that to be honest it comes in a perspex case when it's finished <clears throat> they all look really nice it's got a power off function so that's not just died they all look really nice and they're super cheap i i don't really get why they're not more popular uh, i guess as people want to do their own thing um, but for somebody like me who um, you know, just getting into electronics and uh, designing PCBs is, uh, I can do it, but it's it's quite complex really. I mean, I'm not uh, not good enough yet to crack on my own stuff, although I'm, you know, going to build something else. Um, but this is the, um, this is the, let me show you, yeah, it's the, uh, this one. On Amazon, twelve pounds. No reviews yet. Uh, I think it's pretty new. Yeah, released in July this year. Uh, can't see any review. No reviews on Amazon anyway, and uh, haven't seen any reviews on YouTube. So I just wanted to show you this. I think you know this is something I really wanted to make. I mean, it's a big, fat, in-your-face LED watch that. You're going to kind of look ridiculous if you wear it all the time. But if you, you're going to some geeky convention, you know, spot on. I mean, I might take it to work just so everybody goes, what the hell is that? <laughs> uh, plus, I've wanted to make a watch for ages, but uh, I did try uh, one with a 80 tiny 85 chip and that failed miserably. So, here's the kit. Um... That's the Perspex case. There's uh, uh, five layers in there. Uh, comes with a watch strap, a genuine leather, which is okay. It's uh, you know, it's not the most expensive watch strap, but I mean, what do you expect? It's twelve pounds. Again, this is a kit I could not source. I couldn't put this together for twelve pounds. So you know, it's fabulous, really. I've got uh, the main PCB in there with the LED already soldered on. I mean, I could have soldered that on there, but I guess some people do have trouble with ribbon cables. Uh, sorry, um, you know, LED cable soldering uh, can be fiddly. But then this kit is going to be fiddly anyway, because you're soldering minute components i mean this is all um smd work really really I, this is not for somebody who can't do surface mount this is hardcore surface mount which is exactly what i love you know that's just the um screws let me just get sorry a bit of a pause let me just get this open. This is where I lose stuff. So that's the that's the battery board. There's not much on there apart from the 
enclosure for the batteries. Uh, it's got a regulator in the middle, a regulator chip goes there. Weird thing about this is they've actually put on the ability to add a lithium battery. If you want to go out and get one, it's got a recharging circuit on there. You can't use the recharging circuit if you put button cell batteries on there. Don't, don't do that. Uh, so it's either either or. Um, I did look into, I did think about getting a lithium battery, but decided actually against it because it does have a power down function. <clears throat> Uh, which is probably going to retain the batteries pretty well. So, you know, I don't really want to bother with that. I might not even, might not even solder the USB on there, the USB port. Um, don't know yet. So, the main chip. Resistors. Oh, some people are going to. Some people are going to hate this, but I mean, this is right up my alley. Um, resistors. <laughs> I thought I'd lost something then. So the main chip is uh, this one. Which is... Um, my 8-bit microcontroller STC um, so what have we got so 61 61k flash memory uh, I think it's four oh, no, 64 yeah 61k flash memory up to 35 megahertz a frequency it's quite beefy actually really surprisingly beefy chip I mean it's actually on paper better than the um, 80 mega 328 um, which is the thing obviously the Arduino Uno <clears throat> I don't think it'd be I won't be running at um, 35 megahertz I, not on coin batteries I can't imagine that I've cranked it up to run at that frequency, but um, you know, it's yeah, a very good chip. Um, you know, surprising. They probably could have got away with something smaller, but um, that's a couple of the push buttons. It's got another chip. Uh, this chip is to do with the if you add a lithium battery then this is the recharging controller chip which is uh, what is it again it's the um, pretty standard uh, 4056 uh, which you find on a lot of lithium recharging boards so it's not going to get used but obviously I'm going to solder it on there and then the other chip is the Rock chip. Um, it's the SD3078 um, clock chip with uh, built in crystal oscillator temperature compensation. Uh, this is the thing that keeps the time. <clears throat> Basically, there's a, a there's the four batteries there, which are the main is the main battery pack, as it were, and then there's a battery on the other board, which will keep the time. Uh, when the display is off. So the display is not on all the time uh, to save power and the uh, secondary battery will just keep the um, keep the time on the clock. So uh, it looks really cool. I can't wait to put this together and since I've not had any problems with the other KK Moon kits I, I really think this one will just fall together. Um, so I've got to say, actually, the uh, <clears throat> kit does come with instructions. They're, they're okay. Um, circuit diagram, 
some programming instructions for the watch, uh, cautionary notes about the uh, using the USB connector if you don't have a lithium uh, battery installed, which is good, and some some very basic stuff there. Uh, you probably could just about do it just with these instructions. The images aren't that clear, unfortunately. Um, but it does have a link <coughs> at the bottom here to a website which has much clearer pictures. And uh, you can do it pretty much visually uh, from the pictures. So I would strongly recommend going to that link. I will link that at the bottom of the video, along with the link to Amazon. Not because I need to, or there's any kind of affiliation thing going on there. Just uh, this link, I had a lot of trouble getting to it for some reason, but uh, so I'll link it in the video at the bottom. Now, building, uh, I don't really want to. If I built this on camera, <laughs> it's going to be the longest, most boring video ever, which it already is anyway. <laughs> um, but I might just do a kind of time lapsey thing, perhaps. Yeah, I decided against the um, time lapse thing because it took a couple of hours to make and uh, it would have just been a blur, basically pointless. Um, no real problems. Uh, started with the battery enclosure, very easy, very straightforward. Just get your game on with that. Um, this one I started with the front, what will be the front. Uh, Try to get these these components, you know, straight and clean because that that will be visible. Uh, the, the LCD eventually flips over, sticks on with the double-sided sticky tape, and then you take the you'll take the um, protective cover off. And it's quite nice that it goes out of the way while you're soldering. Um, this is the last part I did. I started with the chip to give myself as much room as possible. Uh, did the two two chips and then just sort of worked around soldering the resistors and capacitors and whatnot. Um, if you're going to tackle something like this, uh, I, I, I would say that's almost essential because you've got to identify components as... Um, a few components, well, yeah, quite a few that you've got to, you know, know what they are. So you can't really just do it without some sort of magnification. I don't use any other magnification while I'm soldering, but just to identify the components, that's almost a must for this kit. Um, good quality solder, definitely. Uh, use the weather, pretty good. Um, you probably want some braid. I, d I definitely. I mean, some people don't really need braid, they, you know, but I, I can't really work without it. Not this sort of stuff, anyway. Um, flux pen is also useful. Uh, you might be able to get away with not having that, but I would say to do the kit really, <clears throat> you're gonna need uh, you're gonna need those things. You can't get them in the picture. <laughs> I would say you need those things, really. Um, but really, you know, those, those are things that are uh, useful on the shelf anyway. Um, so last thing is to connect the batteries to the main board, fit the batteries and sort out the case. Yeah, I had a bit of a delay finishing this project because getting the batteries was tricky. Uh, I live in the middle of nowhere. But I think even if you live in a bigger town, you might have trouble sourcing these directly from just a local shop. They're free vault uh, CR1220s. So I would buy these at the same time you buy the kit. Uh, don't get them from Amazon. They'd be too expensive. They'd cost more than the kit. And uh, I, I got these from eBay. One pound, uh, sorry, two pound twenty-five for ten. So yeah, the kit's finished. And I think it looks really cool, really geeky, spot on, really happy with it. Uh, didn't work straight off, popped the batteries in, I was lucky, no no issues with the soldering I guess. 
and uh, didn't have any problem getting it in the case apart from that. Had to take a little burr off the uh, main P PCB, just a tiny little glitch with that, and um, and file down slightly one of the pieces, just a fraction, just to get it in. It's a, a very tight fit. The batteries themselves are a little bit uh, a little bit rattly, but the main PCB is is absolutely solid in there. I haven't set the time yet. But obviously I will do, I've tested that, both buttons work. So yeah, really chuffed with that. Well, let me get it off. It's a great kit. Really happy with it. Very nerdy. Yeah, I definitely recommend that. I mean, if you feel confident with um, SMD soldering, really, uh, really tiny stuff. If you're confident with that, then this is this is brilliant. 